In this one, we're going to take a look at an LCD TV. This one's got a problem with the CCFL cold cathode flares and lamp backlight. So we're going to take a look at the circuitry, see if we can understand how it works, and see if we can get this one working without changing the backlight. And I can tell you right now, I did get it working. And it's still working, years later. So let's look at the symptom. When I turn this head on, I'm going to get, I don't have a cable hooked up here, so I'm going to get some snow. But notice the color. It's pink. And then it goes off. I'll do that again. This time I've got a cable hooked up. It just comes on with kind of a pink picture, brighter at the bottom, duller at the top, but it's pink in hue. The flashlight test shows that the panel's still working. As you can see, when I shine a flashlight on, I'm just looking at uh, snow on the screen, no, no signal. You can see that there's a picture. So we know that the set is working. We know that the power supply is working. One of the fluorescent backlights has failed. So we'll pull the set apart and take a look at the power supply and the backlight. I'm not gonna replace the backlight as I don't have one, but I'm gonna try and get this backlight operational again and see how long it lasts. Here's something you don't see in a modern television, tons of shielding. There was the fear that these older sets would radiate and cause interference to radio. So they shielded everything, including taping down wires with metallic tape. It's funny, you know, you would expect this more in plasma TVs, which ran at a higher voltage, but in fact, a lot of these smaller sets had even more shielding than the plasma sets. I mean, they've bonded this shield. Not only is it bonded with screws, but they've put a metallic, an aluminum tape on to completely shield the circuit boards. Okay, the board at the top of the screen, the green one there, that's the main signal board. That is a connector that's connecting to, I believe, the front panel connections. That is the LVDS cable connecting to the panel. Audio amplifier chip is that one with the metal, the heat sink on it with the two connectors next to it. And then there's the power supply, which is the yellow colored board. These are the two transformers for the two backlights. So there's two backlights, one for the top and one for the bottom. So what I want to do first is I want to disconnect the wires go into the fluorescent bulbs. I'm going to remove the power supply and I'm going to check some of these capacitors for high ESR. So I'm going to remove those and I'll undo the power connector that takes power over to the main board and now I'm able to remove the power supply board so that I can actually do some tests. So now with those screws out I can remove the board and we can start checking our ESR on our electrolytic capacitors. Here's our transformers. And a couple capacitors in that circuit. This side of the circuitry over here, this is going to be the power supply for the TV side, I'm pretty sure. This is going to be the drivers over here for the lamp drivers because again, here are our transformers. Here's where our lamps are connected. And if we look at the way that the, the fluorescent lamps are actually connected on this set. It looks like it goes out one, comes through this network, comes back, and then it goes back to the other. So they have each, each, each one, they've got two separate circuits. I'll save you guys the boring ESR tests because all the capacitors test good. No bad caps in this unit at all. So now things are looking interesting. It's looking more like I have a bad CCFL tube. A CCFL is a cold cathode fluorescent lamp, and it operates exactly like a neon lamp. There's no hot cathode as in a conventional fluorescent. It's just a sealed electrode, and they're fed with a high voltage like a neon lamp. And they do fail from time to time. If you wonder how long CCFL lamps can run, well, this one's been running for 63,196 hours on my security cameras. And it looks great. If we look at the two connectors, CN03 and CN04, that is for the top lamp. You've got your high voltage going to the lamp, and then there's two sensing lines that come back that are used for the current monitoring. 
So if a lamp is drawing too much current or too little current, it's going to shut the set down. Now through process of elimination, I first tried disconnecting the top lamp and nothing happened. So then I disconnected the bottom lamp and the set came on. If you remember from the initial startup, the picture was pink. On the bottom portion of the of the screen, the top portion appeared to be dark. Well, that was actually caused by failure of the bottom lamp. Fluorescent lamps quite often will go pink when they fail. So in the next shot, I'm going to disconnect the bottom lamp and we're going to fire the setup and see what happens. Now watch, the color will be normal. This is just the top lamp. Okay, color is good, but it still shuts down. The reason it's shutting down is because the current sense loop is detecting that one of the lamps, in this case it's unplugged, is not drawing enough current. But when the lamp has failed, it's also not drawing enough current, which is causing the set to go into shutdown. So short of changing the lamp, what I need to do on this set is I need to trick the current sense loop into not shutting the set down, and then we'll run it and see how long the set will actually run. So let's get into that current sense loop and disable it. So as I continue to pour over the data on this thing, I was able to find a schematic that uh, kind of lays out the circuitry here. Let's go over the circuitry. I've kind of highlighted in pink and yellow the circuitry that's of interest on this unit. So what we have here is this is our controller IC. I see 801 might be a different number on this. This schematic's actually from an LG television, and I, I believe this set was probably made by LG. I'm pretty sure it probably was made by LG, but anyway, they're all very similar. The IC that's in the schematic is the same IC that's in this set. If we look up here, here's our uh, here's our MOSFET output for one lamp driver. Here's our transformer for one lamp. And down here is our other MOSFET for the other lamp. And here's our common driver IC. And we've got current sensing and voltage sensing lines. Now I've already been working on this thing for a while here just trying to isolate where the problem is. And what happens is when you have a bad lamp, it's either going to fail one of two ways. It's either going to short and then you're going to go into an overcurrent situation or the lamp is going to go open or, or start to fail and then you're going to go into an over voltage situation because not all of the power that's being produced by the uh, uh, power supply is going to be consumed by the lamp because the lamp is going bad. Usually when fluorescent lamps fail they actually start to draw more current. Um, but anyway, we have a, a problem on this set where the set's going into shutdown so I'm going to try and break some of these uh, circuits. Now I've already tried breaking the current loop uh, and it, it made no difference. When I broke the current loop the set still shut down so now I'm going to try breaking the voltage loop. So I've been studying the board and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'm, there's actually a jumper which I'm going to disconnect. If we look down here on the board we'll see that this is our this is the transformer output here and it goes through D803 and D805. On my schematic they're listed as 804 and 805 but the board's a little different. I trace it along here and it comes up to this jumper and it ju goes over here to this jumper it's called J12, J812. So I'm going to try and unsolder this jumper here. Let's get my fingernail on the other side. Okay. We got this jumper undone. Okay, so there we go. So I've taken out this jumper. J812. That should break the the voltage monitor loop for what for the one lamp. The lamp that I've determined is the one that's failing, the one that lights up kind of pinkish when it turns on. So we'll reconnect, and I'll, I'll connect up the bad lamp too. Because it is lighting, it's just not lighting properly. We'll get our power cord. And the moment of truth, 
turn on the power and see if this thing comes on and stays on for more than five seconds. Okay, so what have we learned? We have a bad backlight. Color is actually starting to change now. See, the pink has gone away. Still a little bit pink, I guess, but not like it was. Uh, but now we've got a TV that's working because what I've done is I bypassed the over voltage shutdown or the voltage monitor I should say. We'll hook up my coax to it and we'll see that I have a picture. Perfectly serviceable. It's my set. All I use it for is monitoring those cameras so I can see if there's somebody at the, in, at the front of my house when I'm in the back. So hey, we saved one from the scrap heap. Uh, yes, it took me a while to figure out what to do and I, I really did I really did need to track down a schematic, which I was able to find one that was close enough that had the same circuitry so that I could break this down and uh, find a solution. I've changed no parts on this. The only thing I've done is disconnect that jumper, which provided the feedback loop for the over voltage from one of the two transformers. The other voltage one is fine. And I think if I were to disconnect both of them, the set probably wouldn't work. But it's not detecting an abnormality from an over voltage due to a bad lamp. Cold cathode fluorescent lamps typically use neon gas as their inert gas as opposed to argon. And that's why you get that pink color as it, before it warms up because the mercury has not vaporized. And a lot of times when they fail, the reason they're failing is because the mercury is being absorbed by the actual glass and into the phosphorus. It causes the voltage to rise because the lamp is not conducting as much because of the low mercury content. But once it fires up and warms up, the mercury vaporizes and starts to conduct more and then the lamp will operate as normal. CCFLs will last forever. If you don't turn them off, they'll go on forever. But if you turn them on and off all the time, it shortens life just like with any fluorescent lamp. That's how that monitor has 63,000 hours because I never turn it off. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.